like, ah, it's going to be way too hot. But in the shade out here, I could have definitely gone with the turtleneck. That's why I went with the Apple uh, default keynote slides. Anyways, so my name's Cody Smith, at Mr. Cody A. Smith on Twitter, if you're into that. Uh, and today we're going to talk about Mac exploitation, and we're going to do it quick and easy two ways. The goal here is just to get a session on a Mac easily and repetitively. It's got to work every time. So, again, about me. So, I'm a security engineer slash system administrator. Day-to-day, uh, -day, it's everything from uh, Macs to Linux servers, FreeBSD, DNS, all sorts of things. I've, my day's pretty different. Uh, I like Corgis. I use Vim exclusively, and I use Spaces exclusively. Yes. No tabs. No, I get made fun of if I use tabs. So, again, what are we doing? Uh, I want to go over why why this came about and why we're doing it. Um, and then we're going to get that shell on the Mac, and we're going to try to fish a Mac user and get the shell again. So we're just going to deploy the same exploit two completely different ways. Okay. So why are we doing this? So to secure a... To secure a Mac system, I feel like you have to know what makes it insecure, right? If you don't know that an exploit's out there, you can't really protect against it unless you just have an air gap turned off in your bag. Um, so that's what brought this to light. So about a year ago, uh, BHIS, Black Hills Information Security, had their cash cow tipping uh, webcast. It was great. If you haven't watched it, go do so. Uh, and on there, they only had one uh, pen tester, BB Hacking on Twitter, uh, that did Mac. Okay. And the purpose for his was to get past Sophos Antivirus. I really don't care um, so much about getting past Antivirus as getting that shell, but it brought the it brought it to light. I never thought about this attack vector, right? So, what are we doing here? Well, the culprit to all of this was OSX's integrated automator. Automator is a app on all OSX devices. You can run either a workflow. You can run a workflow, applications. Um, in my day-to-day -day use, I use it as a Mac system admin. It makes my life easier uh, because I can deploy these small um, honed-in apps just to do certain things like join to a domain or things of that nature. Um, and if you do have a Apple certified developer uh, cert, we'll get into that, uh, you can sign your applications coming out of Automator, which makes it easy. So where everything lies is in Automator under Utilities, you can choose to run something in a shell on Mac. And one of the shells they give you is Python. So let's assume the user we're trying to go after here is a college kid, right? Let's assume they don't have antivirus because Macs can't get viruses. And <laughs> they need an application to clean up their Mac because they've had it for four years now. They've done some pretty odd things on it and they need to clean all that up before they go home. Okay. So they go on Google and they find Apple Cleaner. It is the proven Mac OS system cleaner. It speeds up your Mac, adds RAM, and totally doesn't give the developer a reverse shell on your machine at all. I promise. And it's available for download. Yeah. So behind the scenes, the attacker creates a um, payload that's reverse, reverse HTTPS, and it's encoded in 64-bit. We dump that into the um, we dump that into the automator. And then you can add some fun tasks around it. I've added notifications on the top and the bottom to say, hey, this application started, or you know, thank you for using the application. Uh, and then the attacker, so I like to use the same exact server that the person downloaded the application from, because if you're looking at logs, it's like, okay, I downloaded it from there, and now it's talking to that. It makes sense. It's an update, right? So what happens is you have to have your listener sitting there because you don't know exactly when someone or who all is going to open your application. So you have to have that sitting there ready for them. And the attacker only needs to convince the user to drag the application into the applications folder on Mac, which is what 
everyone has to do when you install something on Mac. <laughs> as soon as you download an application, this little bar comes up and it says, you know, insert program name here, and you drag it into the applications folder. Ta-da, you're in, right? So, yeah, yep. So you can drop this just as a DMG and it makes your life easier. Okay. So the proof of concept is where all this comes in. Um, like I said, you just put that uh, encoded payload in Apple uh, Automator. You save the application. And I want to skip through the proof of concept here really quick. And we will just go to the demo, which let's all hope it works. So... Right here, we're in my server. This is actually hosted in AWS, which if you've never ran anything out of AWS, it's actually really nice. I almost prefer it to having a box at my house at this point. Uh, just make sure you sign the form that says, hey, I'm doing pen testing out of this box. Otherwise, you get a cease and desist letter really, really quickly. I promise. <laughs> that was a port scan out of one IP address. And, and, yeah, and it wasn't the IP address that I own. Anyways. So we have the handler, it's running here, it's waiting for sessions. So let's open my totally legitimate Apple cleaner. It's going to clean up my PC, it's going to make life better. It's going to take off all the crud and etc. So the only, I've got notifications turned off here so email and stuff like that doesn't pop up and get awkward for everybody. But if you look up here in the menu bar, and I don't know if you can see this because it's relatively small. Nah, it's gone. But uh, there's just a little sprocket spinning in the top corner. So someone's like, ah, okay, yeah, application is totally running. It's fine. So we come here. You can see that we have a session. So typing with one hand is never fun. <laughs> And you can see where we are, right? And the only thing this user had to do was drag and drop an application in the applications folder and run it. If you're wondering how it holds up against antivirus, um, I'm running Malwarebytes on my computer now. It's not turned off and everything went fine. Uh, it never flagged it during the creation of the application. Uh, we tested it against McAfee at work and sure enough, it still allowed the same exact thing to happen. And it was tested on Sophos as well, and it did the same exact thing. So, you know, it's just a matter of you have to convince the user of saying, hey, this is a totally legitimate application that totally won't do anything bad. And let's be honest, most of our end users, especially if we're talking college kids that bought a Mac for their computer, they're probably just like, heck yeah, it'll work. And they move on with their life. So this is great and all, and I'm glad the live demo worked. But I called it an easy exploit two ways. And why I called it two ways is because <clears throat> Apple Cleaner works really, really well. You know, it bypasses Gatekeeper for the simple fact that it's signed by me for $99 a year. You too can have signed malware. Uh, that's all the Apple developer thing is. It's $99 a year. You can sign your applications. I bit the bullet of the $99 so I can do this. At the same time, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so Apple Cleaner won't really work if you're trying to just send it out to employees of a company, right? Like how often does your IT send something to you like, hey, clean up your computer, please? That's, uh. So to use in an engagement, the first thing I thought of, of like, huh, what's something that IT would definitely have me put on my computer? McAfee. So this is a superior Mac antivirus solution that totally isn't a walking vulnerability like other solutions. It's totally legit. It's the most secure thing we could possibly come out with. And this is what we have. And I didn't have time to Photoshop an Apple logo into this one too, or I totally would have. So enterprise requires AV, right? It's a CIS standard. It's a NIST standard. You have to have a centrally managed antivirus solution. And they're pretty prominent on that. They haven't backed off that stance. So most people don't know what IT does day to day. They just probably assume in the back of their head that it's like a terminal and Reddit, and that's about it. 
And for some people, that's true. However, so a phishing email sending this application out using, you know, whatever wonderful framework you would like to use, Social Engineering Toolkit, it's a great way to make a quick phishing email. So if you're going to send that out to the domain users and say, hey, everybody, it's IT. According to big standard here, we need to deploy this to all your Macs. We can't do it because it requires your admin credentials. Thank you. And if anyone here is thinking, no one on Mac has admin credentials in a managed environment. What that guy said, everybody does, I promise. <laughs> so we send this DMG out to everybody and say, hey, everybody, install this thing. And sure enough, it works. So, and I don't really need to do another live demo. You guys saw the, uh, yeah. So I've got the same exact installer that has the nice pretty logo and stuff like that. Nobody's really going to pay attention. Most people don't know if it's McAfee or McAfee. So they're not really going to pay attention to, is this a real antivirus? Anyways, so some improvements to the code that I've made over the past uh, about six months of toying around with everything. So if you're using it in an engagement, if you're using it for, you know, pen testing or anything of the nature, there's a couple things that um, will benefit you. A is, like I said, getting your Apple certified developer certificate. Uh, and when I went through the process, I did it legitimately because I'm using some applications that I'm doing. But you can also do it completely illegitimately, just like you can set up a fake iTunes account. It's not really difficult. Uh, another thing is having the traffic that is derived from the application go to a legitimate server. So like I have here, update dash, and then the same exact website that they came from. That way, when the application is making that request, it's going out, it looks like it's still from that software server. At the same time, this is an HTTPS connection. So having a SSL cert on that makes life a lot easier. Okay. So assuming that all of that is gone, it's null, and I've shown you that you can get a shell on a device as soon as someone runs this, uh, the question that someone asked me was, well, what stops it then? I personally, no, oh, yeah, when you download AV and it turns out to be completely insecure. Anyways, so how do we stop this? Uh, other than user policy of saying, hey, everybody, if you get an email from us saying, download this application, you know, how can you really stop this? You know, there's some... Um, different policies you could have on machines, especially if they're managed Macs, you know, you can have your application whitelists, things of that nature. Gatekeeper is null because you have that certificate. So one thing that I'm a huge advocate for, and it doesn't have to be a little snitch, I just put it up here because that's why I use personally, is a host-based firewall, one that's granular. So the firewall on Mac as a whole is really nice. And you can have rules and things like that. But it's not easy for a user to see and it's not easy for a user to use. However, Little Snitch gives you, if anyone has ever um, used it, you know, it gives you this beautiful little pop-up and it says, hey, this application is trying to connect. And you go, well, that doesn't make sense. It's supposed to add more RAM and clean my Mac up. It shouldn't be connecting to this big server elsewhere. So you can deny that connection. At that point, the application fails out. It can't get that session, so I've actually got the failsafe that if it can't get a session, all it does is it closes all applications on the Mac and restarts it. And then you're like, oh, it didn't work, darn. Uh, anyways, so that's the big takeaway that, you know, if you're looking to mitigate a threat similar to this, other than policy, and it's just an easy, quick deploy, a granular host-based firewall is always helpful. So does anybody have any questions? I don't know how I'm doing on time. Oh, yeah, about 15. Come again, I'm sorry? No, I haven't posted anything right now just because, yeah. But it's an option. It's something I could do. Right. Anything else? Uh, so, like I said, when... When we're dropping this on a box that has McAfee or Sophos, it didn't detect it. At the same time, so this is that beautiful little little snitch uh, pop-up we talked about. 
I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm sorry. Anyways, so it'll probably pop up again because on Mac OS, if you deny it connection for a service, it tries a different server. Anyways, so the question again was, I'm sorry, I got distracted by my little snitch pop-up. Yeah, besides blocking. So antivirus didn't catch it, right? So other than user training or another application that you would put on the host, so like application whitelisting, application blacklisting, things like that, um, that was one of the big things that I took away. But a but a host-based firewall was a really quick and easy. Most users can just be like, okay, deny and move on with their day. If that makes sense. Yeah, email filtering. If you're going with that attack vector. There's another, There, I didn't want to do it because I already had my two ways, but another way I found to deploy it was to um, do a Excel spreadsheet. And on Mac OS, you can change the icons just as easy as you can Windows. So give it the Excel icon for a document, label it master salary sheet, and then you think it doesn't work, but it does. <laughs> so, and then what you do is you package that in with an actual Excel spreadsheet. So when the person opens the application, it gives me the shell and at the same time it opens Excel. Right. So they think life is okay, but really, you know, I've got it. Anything else? All right. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming down to see me. I appreciate it. See you guys all around. Good.